We'll be showing you how to do the rack and pinion replacement. Um, we're going to be doing the the tie rods. So the rack and pinion comes with the inner tie rods. We're going to replace in the outer tie rods. Mine as well since we're there. Um, first thing what you need to do, you don't have to, um, but you can. Basically, if you have a little siphon or a turkey baser, you can siphon out most of the fluid. Um, this is transmission fluid. This is going to be Dextron. Um, you can use like the Dextron 6, or the, but I think it's like Dextron 3. That's what it requires. Um, so yeah, any Dextron type of fluid. Um, but you can use Dextron 6 just because it's actually a way better process. Um, lift it up the car from right here. So lift it up from right there. You can either do it from right here, the subframe, or right there. But there might be like a little skid plate. Um, jack stand points right there on the subframe. So put one right there, and then on the opposite side, took off the wheels. Those are going to be 21 millimeters. And then um, I just wanted to skip all that so I could show you the rest. The other stuff was the most important piece. So first thing what we're gonna go ahead and do, we're gonna, we need something like a little catch can so we can catch all the power steering, whatever remaining fluid that comes out. We're gonna need an adjustable wrench to take off one of the bolts and then some pliers to take off the low pressure hose. Um, well basically my customer complaint is that the power steering is making a lot of noise and um, I found out right here it's leaking a lot so that's what's sucking a whole bunch of air and that's what's causing the little growling sound. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and disconnect it right there. You need a white out pin too, because we need to make our marks. Um, there's a few ways you can either do this. You can either do this right here up on top. So if you wanna disconnect it from up there, or you wanna disconnect it from down below right here. So whatever you determine that's easier, I would recommend to do it right here. So. You're not really messing around with too much um, because the other base is right there. Um, what else? Make sure the wheels, the steering wheels align straight. So you go up inside, you'll, you'll set it straight and then we'll go ahead and do that. Um, these are going to be 21 millimeters, so it's going to be 121, 119. Here's the second and here's a third one right here, but you have to go up on top. See it, so that's the the third 19 millimeter. Um, the ball joints, I meant the tie rods are going to be 19, so we got to pop out the cotter pins for those. So same thing for that side, too. Then we'll go, there should be like a little skid plate right here. There should be, um, it should be held on by like I think like four or six uh 12 millimeter bolts or 14, um, either or so. There's that. So I'm just only going to show you on one side on how to take out the the, ball, uh, the tie rod. So you should get some new cotter pins. Um, the kit, since you're replacing the rack, should come with some cotter pins. So you would grab these guys right here and then kind of twist them out. You want to make sure this is flat as possible. And then once you get that, we'll just kind of tap them away so we can get this to pop out. You can reuse these as long as you save them. You don't destroy them. But... Now, if you're going to be reusing the tie rods, what I would recommend to do is to put back on this castle nut right here so we don't damage any threads. So we'll do that. And then you'll get a pretty heavy hammer. I'm using a five pound hammer or a four pound hammer. And then we're gonna hit this knuckle right here. Exactly, not right here. We're gonna hit right here. This is where the tie rod goes into. So usually it just kind of gets compressed over time inside it, inside of it and then it kind of gets stuck. So once we start hitting this with the, um, the hammer, it should pop out.
Now we're gonna... So, the knuckles on there, it's like a little hard angle for me to hit. So I gotta put in some, some sole into this. There we have it. So yeah, I would recommend you turn the wheel all the way to the left. Just make sure you keep this guy on because um, we're gonna do the other side too. We wanna make sure that this is centered as possible because when we go back to hook up everything, that we can make sure that we have um, perfect align alignment so we're gonna go ahead and clean up our area um just clean up this bottom one because we need a market and then this is a 12 millimeter right here All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and loosen the top bolt too. That's another 12. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and lift this right up. Now if it's stuck, like mine, you can do is get like a little pry bar kind of pry up and down so we got the top up and free now we're all right so um i'm not gonna sit here and fight this all day so we're just gonna leave this on here we're just gonna mark it up from up top so we'll just use a white out pen We'll basically mark one line. So we'll mark that line right there. So we know where to um, put this back together and that'll help out for our alignment. Um, so we'll just let all of this drop because the top part goes up and down, but the bottom's stuck on there, so I'll take that off while it's off the vehicle, and then we can center the bottom later. Um, now we're going to go ahead and disconnect the, the hose lines. So this one's going to be a 17, and then this one's going to be, well, obviously we're going to take off this little hose clamp right here, um, and then we're going to go ahead and take off this bolt right here or the, the fitting, we'll take that off later. You don't have to take it off right now. Let's go get a bigger wrench. So we can see if we can do this. All right, so while we're taking off this guy, this guy's gonna be on there pretty tight. Uh, we got a little bit going. And then basically, we're just gonna kinda use our thumb or use both hands to, to pry. And if you can, twist as you're pulling. I used the back of my palm as leverage, so as I'm pulling the hose, I used the back of my palm just to like, 
like has like a little leverage pry bar. So I used it like that. We'll just have all the fluid pour right out. Now at this point we're ready to drop drop the rack. So we'll take off the the four remaining bolts. So the first one that we're going to take, we're going to take off the top one because I uh, want to knock off this one first. We'll go ahead and tap out this bolt. All right, cool. So now we got this guy all said and done. We're going to go ahead and unbolt it from the tie rods on both sides. So, going to go ahead and see if I can show all this. So right here, if we didn't have this little um, pipe for the return load, the return hose, we would basically this thing would drop right away. But since we have that right there, we're gonna go ahead and make sure that the stud over there that's on there, that's where we're gonna be getting it out from. So go ahead. All right, so now what we're gonna go ahead and do, we're gonna kind of count the nuts right here, and then we'll do one right there. Um, this was actually kind of loose. So, yeah, I don't know what to really say on that. So normally you would get two adjustable wrenches, pretty good, decent size. You'd put one right here, and then you'll do the other one right there just to loosen up this bolt and then after you loosen the bolt you'll go ahead and just spin this right out You can use a 19 right here too, just to help you out. All right, so now that we got that off, we're not gonna be reusing this tie rod. If you are, then you could just throw it on the other one. So basically the reason why I counted this, uh, or I marked it, it's just so I can mark this bolt right here to this side of the thread, and then we're gonna count all these threads. So basically we'll just count the top hats. So you know the one where your finger catches on, we'll, ca we'll count all of those. And then on the other one, you'll make your mark at the same spot too as well. And then whatever, let's say if there's 20 threads, you're gonna, you're gonna get the new one. That's right here. You're gonna count 20 threads of that too as well because obviously they're the, some of them are a little bit longer, you can see. Right there, that's how it's a little bit longer. Let me take it out of this bag. So you see how that one's 
tad bit longer just on threads not by that much so that's why we're only going to be counting just the bottom piece not the top piece just the bottom piece so it'll be like one two three four five and so on etc say we get about to 20 and then that's where we're going to stop so then we're going to go ahead and take off this bolt right here and put it on the new um, tie rod and then we're going to count it up to the same threads of that um, another way you can do it you can count how many times this rotates back um, that's one way you know every time this white line rotates one that'll be one count until you back it right out so same thing but I like to do my method of counting the threads just so we know um, so you want to count the threads from the top piece right right up there or on the bottom yeah you can start you can do the bottom depends on on how you want so yeah just count the threads from the bottom to the top or from the top to the bottom so right here the bottom of the nut and then work your way all the way down so I'm gonna go ahead and do that all right so at least I'll show you guys for this one so basically you would get the wrench set right here and if you can get them pretty close apart um, that would be great if not um, then you're just gonna have to put one on the floor and then you just push the other one so the nut that's on the tie rod itself right here that's gonna be lefty loosey so you just squeeze right here and then just like that and then once you get it since we already made our mark see how right there we got the nut loose and we'll just spin this it should spin off like pretty easy just like that the other one was rusted on there so as you can see that it was um, it wasn't even closed all the way alright so this is how I'm going to show you how to count the threads um, so basically if you can get something like a flathead screwdriver or a little blade and then we'll count it from right here so basically one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen so on the 18 just a tad bit more so we'll go like 18 and a half so that we know that so at 18 and a half so with your marker I like to write on these so we keep it as reference just in case you forget so we'll go 18 and one half so just like that so we'll put 18 threads and then half of it so we'll go ahead and save that and then we'll go ahead and pull out the nut <clears throat> and then not bo both of the sides are going to be different they're not going to be the same count so one's going to be a larger number and then the other one's going to be smaller obviously so don't go by one side you need to one's going to be specifically because this one was at 18 and a half and then the other one was legitly at 21 so just so you're aware this is this is not going to be perfect we just need to get this as close as possible to spec so it's more easier for the the alignment technician so we just wanted to do that all right so don't forget obviously you're going to have a base and a top hat so the base where it has a little like this piece right here a little curve that's going to be on the outside facing the outside and then where there's no lip that's going to be on the inside some nuts might be different um, I'm just letting you know for mine so we need to do 18 and a half <clears throat> so we'll go one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and actually pretty dead on. 18 and a half. <clears throat> so we're good right there. So then we'll go ahead and mark this area, the 18 and a half. We'll remark all that again. So now if we move it, at least we'll know where the our little line will go. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and put on our our tie rod. So we'll just spin it right in there, just like that. All 
All right, so right there, we basically got the um, the tie rod all all snugged up to where the bolt stopped. So what we're gonna go ahead and do, we're actually gonna spin the tie rod just a tad bit more than what it actually is. Cause once we tighten the nut, the nuts can actually go along. So we try to get it as a little bit close. So we're gonna be tightening the nut. So this one's gonna be stationary. So this bolt right here, that's gonna be stationary. So the inner tie rod. So we're just only moving the nut. So you see how right there, when I tighten it, it um, it, it, it's basically corresponding with the with the mark now. All right, so now, once now that we're done with that, we can go ahead and um, take off this guy right here. We'll take this off in a little bit, but I just want to let you know which one we're going to be taking off. So we're going to be taking off that one. Um, so on this guy right here, we're going to go ahead and take this off. We'll clean up that. And um, that one's going to be a 17 millimeter. Try to use a little box in right there. Just hit it with your with your palm, and then we'll be good from there. And then the rest we can spin. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and clean up this. So make sure, because obviously there's some debris in there. I don't know if you can see that. So we'll go ahead and get the brake cleaner. Like literally we need to be very thorough because we don't want to void the warranty on this or we don't want to damage anything. So right there, I don't know if you can see that. So there's like a little, like a tad bit debris. Right, let me flip it on the other side. You can see right there, there's a little bit on the end. See all this debris that came out? We don't want that going back inside. So... Now if it's stuck on there, like how this one is, what you can do is get something in there and just scrape it on out. Or if you have like a little wire brush or something, you just want to clean that out as much as possible. All right, so that's cleaned out. Now we're gonna go ahead and clean off this area on the outside because we wanna make sure that this is clean. So when we're sitting, our mating surfaces, So we'll clean up right there. We'll spray in there. Be careful with your eyes. Now this feels pretty smooth. At first it was feeling kind of a little rust, like crusty. There was some debris inside, but now that's that's good. So as you're spraying some brake cleaner, just make sure you're kind of spinning that around. Remember, we want this as clean as possible. So I'm gonna keep this capped off until we put this back on the car, and then we'll go ahead and thread this on. This is not a pain in the butt to thread on, so if it was, then we would actually put this on right now. This will just make it easier to put back in the rack and pinion. Um, yeah, so we'll just do that. Now we're gonna go ahead and get the other piece from this. We'll go ahead and look at it. Nothing looks special or anything. So we'll go ahead and mark it. See how we're gonna pop this guy out. Go ahead and inspect the boot. Make sure this is not torn or anything. All 
All right, finally it's starting to go. Now usually they're not on there that hard, but this one's all rusted out. So we're gonna go ahead and clean up this. Clean it up with some brake cleaner. Get a little wire brush, clean this out, and then lubricate it. I'm gonna clean up this whole unit, and we'll get right back to the video. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and install the rack. Um, so we're gonna, I'm gonna slide it in from over here and then kind of work my way around. All right, so we'll leave it. I'm leaving this bolt hanged on, and then I totally forgot to put on the um, switch over the the other bushing for this side. So I'm gonna go grab that, clean it up, and then I'll put it right back. We're gonna go ahead and put the bushing on first, and then for the bushing, we want the flat side against the rail. And then we'll put this right over the bushing itself. Then I'm gonna put the nut on. And the same thing for the top, we'll put that one up on top. We'll just thread them in a little bit. And then we'll put the washer and the nut really? right back on. All right, so now that we have everything all bolted up, right, we need to actually, we need to put this guy right back in. So I'm going to hammer this guy right back out and I'm going to lower it or you know what? No, this is what we're going to do. I'm actually going to put this right here. So here's our mark, right? That's where our mark's going to be at. So this guy only goes in one way for right up here. So I was putting this guy right in and I noticed that it can only go in one way. There's actually a little notch. Let's see if I can forward that. Let's see right there. So you see how there's one notch that's a little bit bigger than the others in the center of that? So right there. So that notch is pretty big, so that can only go in one way. So at least our line, our, our white out lines up. And then we'll go ahead and push this all the way up. And then we'll just drop it down just like that. So now we have these guys turning at once. All right, so we're good to go. Um, basically what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and hook up the power steering lines. We're not gonna bolt this up right away. We're just gonna leave this alone because we're gonna do this as a mock. So we, we gotta get this as close as possible to being straight. Um, like I said, we wanna make it easy as possible for the alignment guy and everything. So we'll go ahead and take off these caps. We'll take off one at a time. Remember, make sure that this guy is clean.
And then I guess you're supposed to torque these down to 20 foot pounds or to whatever the specs are. That's what they're saying. And then don't forget to clean this guy up as much as possible. And then same thing for the other hose. Make sure you clean up the inside. So then we'll put our hose clamp in there. Then we'll go ahead and put the hose on. All right, so for this guy, we're gonna kind of pull back the hose a little bit, and then we're gonna spin this while making sure we don't have any binds or anything. All right, so we got these both in. Um, yeah, pretty much ready to put on the tie rods. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and put it on our ball joint uh, tie rod. So if it's like this, this can actually spin around. This is gonna be pretty tight. <laughs> or you can use the adjustable wrench and spin it from right here. So just like that. So it's fine if it's coming at a different angle. Just wanted you guys to see that. And then we'll go ahead and lower it. So now we're gonna kind of, so now we're gonna kind of basically see how close we are. Now you're gonna, you can either do this with, with the wheel on or without, but I can kind of see it from right here. I mean, we're pretty dead on right there. And then this one too. So we're dead on right there. Now we want to look at the steering wheel. So the steering wheel, we're off. So what we're gonna go ahead and do, we're gonna go back inside. And then we're gonna spin the shaft a little bit. Or back, back on the floor. So that's why I didn't wanna bolt these guys right in. So like I said, so we're gonna bolt and spin that. So if we wanna spin it clockwise on the steering wheel, obviously we're gonna spin this clockwise. All right, so now that I got this pretty aligned, I'll go ahead and show you right now, but I'm just since I'm under here, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten those bolts. So go ahead and move the rack. All right, so now we're done torquing that. I'm gonna go ahead and not the wheel. So then we can see the wheel. If we're off or not, we 
we're just like a tad bit off. And same thing, we're not that far off, so we're actually pretty dead on. Um, basically, what why we're doing this is because, see how we have the wheel, steering wheel straight? It's because we don't want the alignment shop to charge us more money to fix that correction because there's so much play you can do. All right, so now that we got that cleared, now for the power steering. So I'm going to be using Dextron 6. I'm going to go ahead and just fill it right up. So you can see as gravity is doing its thing, it's bubbling right up on its own. I'm not doing anything to that. So I'm going to go turn the steering wheel. Now we're going to go ahead and turn the steering wheel all the way right. And then all the way left. So we're going to do this probably about like 30, 40 times just so we can get most of the air pockets out and then I'll come right back to the video. So I went ahead and put back on the wheels and I saw that I was pretty off. So I went ahead, went back under and recentered everything. Um, so I think you should check the alignment with the wheels on so you can get everything going. Um, right now I'm just a tad bit off. So right, right there that is pretty much centered. You can just see how much off I am. I'm going to go ahead and adjust that. Just not right now. So right now we're going to go ahead and start the car on. We're not going to move the steering wheel at all. We're just going to start it and let the car idle. Then we're going to go ahead and check the power steering reservoir. So we're a little bit low. So if you have a funnel, that'll help out. So you're not like me. All right, so we'll go ahead and just add a tad bit more. So now we're right there. All right, so it went down again, as you can see right there. Now, basically we're, we wanna let this idle for about a few minutes. Um, well, not really a few minutes. I would say about like a minute max and then you'll start turning the wheel left and right So we're gonna pay attention to the level um, Make sure there's no bubbles if you do see a bubble then obviously, you know, we got um, air leaks inside the system, but So I mean now it's been a kind of a minute. So we're gonna go ahead and turn the wheel pretty slow So as long as you're not hearing any noise as you're turning it the moment you start hearing a noise stop turning it like the little power steering growling noise and then we'll turn this back and forth so what we're trying to do is we're trying to bleed out all the air pockets so yeah you're gonna pretty much repeat this step and then top off as needed. Then we're going to go take it to the alignment store or the alignment shop. And then when you're going all the way left, so like, I don't know if you can hear the pump kind of like get a little bit more resistance. You don't want to do that for too that long, for that long. Um, I would say about like a, like a second max and then back it off. And just so we don't burn out the pump while there's any air pockets in the system. Not that already the, air, the power steering pump already got hurt as it is. So we'll go ahead and leave that. Then you're going to go ahead and double check it. Once the power steering gets hot, then it should be in that right there between those two once it's hot um, right now I, would, I wouldn't recommend just let it warm up a little bit so you can see it's not registering on cold or hot so I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off and then top off as needed all right so we're gonna put back in the dipstick I added just a tad bit more so right there we're at the hot So I don't think it's that hot. I'm gonna have to take off some. I'm gonna use the, the vacuum 
So just top off it as needed, um, as much as possible, and then you'll go ahead and start from there. And then you can go ahead and take it for a test drive. But as of right now, we're good to go. But if this video helped you out, give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you have any questions regarding this. And then hit that subscribe button for more upcoming videos in the future. And thanks for watching.